Good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Rory O'Donnell and I'm going to be assisted with my uh, gorgeous um, co-presenter over here, Dalibor. So um, I'm the Open JDK Group Quality Lead. Dalibor is the wonderful uh, title of Principal Product Manager for the Java Platform Group. And between us, we're going to talk to you about the um, JDK9 outreach, the awesome parts. So prepare to be dazzled. The obligatory 10 second. Are we done yet? You're fast readers, right? <laughs> okay, so this is what our agenda is about. So I'm going to take items one and two, and Alibor is going to take three and four. Um, so uh, let me just give you some background. What is this JDK 9 outreach? Um, for JDK 8, we wanted to um, make sure that we didn't have the same situation when JDK 7 went GAA and we had issues almost immediately thanks to UI at Apache Lucent. So we wanted to go out and talk to the community at large and say, come and work with us, download our early access bills, test them, let us know what issues you find. So. Um, the first person we, we approached was Ui, and he was delighted to come on board and um, suggested others that might be uh, of the same frame. So um, before JDK 8 actually shipped, we actually got um, something like 20 open source community members to actually projects to come and talk to us and work with us, downloading and logging bugs. Um, at the moment, we're up to 101. We've just broken through the 100 projects. So we are communicating the changes that are in early access builds to over 100 open source projects. Um, I'd, I'd love to know if any of you guys have ever heard of me before coming in here and actually had received emails on device mailing lists uh, or anything that you see me annoyingly sending out these emails all the time. Anybody? One? Yes, excellent, great, okay, it's me, yeah, okay, <laughs> it's all my fault. Okay, so, um, so this is a continuous pro uh, process and in the last 16 months we've added 18 new and um, well, actually we've added 20 because another two came in in the last uh, two weeks since these slides were actually created. And one of the great things uh, that we measure is how this is how successful we are with this is the number of bugs that are coming in from the uh, the community. In the last um, year, we've had 60 new 64 issues logged, and I'll show you how some of these break down into different priorities and and components and stuff. So in total, since we actually started, um, it's uh, 173 bugs have actually been logged. And I see lots of faces here of the people who have actually logged those bugs, so it's great to see you here. It's so simple to actually join. I would like to recommend it to every single one of you here today. This is something that you will, we give you information about what's going into the latest build and uh, changes that might break you and advise you, okay, if you're doing this, you need to test on this particular build. So all you'd have to do is send a mail to the quality discuss, open JDK, or you can send a mail to me as well, if you prefer. And um, the great thing is, what you, you can't really read this, but if, you, if that was a little bit clearer, you would see that Stefan Bodevig from uh, Apache Ant, I had been annoying him for so long to come and join us. And he was actually doing testing, but he didn't want his stuff listed externally because he thought everybody would be annoying him. So eventually he sent me an a, a mail <clears throat> at 8 a.m. in the morning, and by 10 minutes past 8, I had him listed on the OpenJDK Quality external page. So I, d I can't guarantee every time that I'm going to get you listed within 10 minutes, but I will, you know, I will do my best to get you on there. Now, these are the guys who are, this is just five, but these are the guys that log the most bugs and the highest quality bugs in the last six months. Number one, Apache Lucent, and that's uh, usually uh, UI. Um, Apache Tomcat came in with six bugs in a row, just together. Just here you go, six bugs. Thank you. 
really, really, you know, this is what actually helps us to make sure and improve the quality of the release that we actually release at GA time. So thank you to these guys. They've done a sterling job. They, you know, it makes our life so much better. And uh, when the bugs come in, Dalibor and I will make sure that, the, you know, these bugs are given the, the proper um, viewing by the right people. So we try to get them because we know the quality of the bugs coming in from the people are absolutely first class and need to be fixed. Now, just to give you an idea of um, the overall from, from the, uh, when we started this. So we, 173 bugs have been logged, as I mentioned. Um, lovely to see that we have zero unresolved P1 and P2 bugs from the, the loads that are coming in from the community. We still have 14 P3s that we have to work on, so that's work in progress. But you can see here that we fixed 94, or sorry, 96 of these. So they're obviously bugs that we interpreted as being high quality, needed to be fixed before we actually shipped the product out. So thank you again for logging all these bugs. So that's by priority. Now, if you look then at uh, the different components, when, uh, if you were to look at a similar graph as this uh, 12 months ago, you would have seen that Hotspot was the one that was getting the most bugs. Client and Core Libs have caught up very much so in the last while. So they have a total of 46 and 23, whereas Hotspot still is just up there with 51. But what we can see is that, you know, the, the number of bugs is actually going down. And with that, I'm going to hand over to my able... Let's see. Wonderful. So, um, before I get started with the slides, right, that's the boring part. Um, what we usually do here is we have a governing board session afterwards, and these guys drink beer. And there are five governing board members. I bought six beers. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give one beer out to one of you whose project signs up for this quality outreach stuff on quality discuss at openjdk, java.net, by the end of this talk, right? So, get on it and then come back later get a beer and now we can go with the slides so um the thing about nine is of course um we've been doing this for a while and the one question people ask me a lot about nine is does anybody really care about nine yet uh, aren't people just moving up to eight like this outreach stuff do developers really want to know about this stuff and so how, what do we do like well rory sends a lot of emails so there is that but the question is, you know, do, do other projects care? Do people already filed box against you know, issues in nine on their own? Is, is something happening there? So one way to look at this is look at their mailing list traffic through archives like MarkMail and just search for subjects like JDK9. And you'll find Rory a lot of times, right? This guy is sending out a lot of email and getting a lot of replies back too, which is good. But you also find that if you look at how that has developed the past couple of years, when I started out, there were like a thousand messages across various projects in Apache and Eclipse and so forth. Uh, this has grown sixfold in the last two years, in part because we have worked diligently to get more projects to sign up and to participate, and they've spread the word. Um, and more importantly, if you compare the, the, this to where we were with JDK 8, uh, one year before its GA, um, we were you know, more than double today in terms of JDK 9 traffic outside in terms of interest than we were at the time of 8 at the same time. And if you look at how encouraging, you know, the community reaction was to aid, how much people people cared about getting their stuff to work with aid, I think this is a really good, you know, data point to look forward to. So next slide, please. Now, uh, the other data point to look forward to is that, um, you know, one thing is to uh, try to extract random data off the internet. The other is to just ask people directly. So in this outreach effort, we have this project participating. So what we did um, about two years um, before Java 1 this, uh, this autumn was to do a short survey and just to ask the participating projects, um, you know, if they're testing at all, uh, how far along they are, um, what their, you know, um, success is. 
And so we had about a half of the projects that participate in COIC outreach came back to us, filled out a survey. Um, around 90% actually tried already to build the project with nine and had some success. Um, and about 86% uh, plan to support nine within the first year of the release of JDK9. Um, and I think this is really, really a good piece of data to have because if you if you look at the talks, um, you know, like, like US and so forth, there is work to be done. A work to be done on the JDK side, of course, to make sure that we have a great release. Work to, do, to be done on a bunch of libraries to make sure they work really well with nine. But there is also a lot of willingness in the community to participate in this. And I think this is a great, great thing to have. It's a great community we're part of. Next slide. Um, and so to give you some examples of the things we've, we've done um, uh, in the past year, um, like I said, Rory sent out, sent out these emails, tells people about the builds, um, tells what's in them, and then hopefully some of them will try things out, let us know about things that break. Um, and Rory mentioned that the Tomcat project was very active in giving us some really good bugs uh, to work with. So for example, Mark Thomas um, submitted an issue, JDK something or other, um, about the default behavior of URL connection, which was to use caching. And that turned out to be problematic. Um, in particular, on, say, on Windows, or when you're using jar URL collections, uh, you may end up ha having uh, descriptor leaks um, or you know, files may end up deadlocking. And so he made a suggestion. There was a discussion first between us where we tried to figure out this is something that we can resolve between us already. Um, um, then the discussion uh, upon a suggestion was carried over to the core libs, the step mailing list in OpenJDK. And there, Mark and members of the JDK team discussed various ways to, to address the problem. It was finally resolved by adding an API for this by, I think, Michael McMahon, um, while maintaining the current behavior so that existing code that relies on this doesn't break. So there's a new API for this since Java 9. There is a get, set, default, use caches in Java Net URL connection. And this is just one example of the kind of interactions we have with developers of participating projects. It's not all just bugs they find. It's also um, extensions they need. It's also things they find that should be working better in a future release where they need functionality that isn't there yet. Next, please. Um, another example, for example, is uh, with Ant, as Uwe mentioned in his talk, the Apache Ant uh, team has actually done a really good job of getting their code to work and pass all the tests with nine. Um, and then it turned out, of course, that it had one, one, one small problem. Um, and usually we can help with the simple stuff where people forget to set the release flag or whatever. If we can't help you directly, we direct them to the right mailing list, which also can be challenging because there are mailing lists on OpenJDK. Um, for stuff like this, in this case, um, Stefan was having one test in Ant that was failing due to, um, well, the things people do, you know, reflection, trickery to get an internal API in XML uh, parser to do something or other. And of course, with JDK9 with modules, that doesn't work anymore. So what are you going to do? Well, you can complain, you can write a blog post, you can tweet angrily, or you can go to Corelib's dev. And that's what he did and said, you know, uh, I would like to find a good way to solve this. And so there was a thread on Corelib's dev. Uh, which went on for, can you go to the next slide? For, you know, for a few weeks. Um, right, they wanted to use an XLT test from within Eclipse with a secure manager, how to make this work. And it was resolved after a couple of weeks uh, with a change both in the JDK, where it turned out to have to be a bug um, in our implementation of the XML functionality, and also by making some small adjustment to the test code in the Apache Ant. So that's the other thing. We, you know, we try to work with, with community projects to make sure that their code gets better as well and in, in uses the new functionality. Um, and then, of course, there is more. Some of the projects we started to work with uh, because we came across you know, their own efforts to, um, to get their code to work with Nine, like Apache Calcite. And Julian Hyde is, the, um, I think, the, the, the VP for that in Apache. Um, when it started out, they had some challenges, right? We spoke, we got them on board, and eventually, you know, their stuff runs on nine. I'm happy about it. Um, other projects um, are actually using this whole move to nine thing as a way to get the users to move off old versions. Log4j, who here uses Apache Log4j, right? Everybody uses Apache Log4j too, right? 
because if you're using one, uh, one is kind of end of life. And so uh, it's also broken on nine due to new versioning changes. And so the Log4j team has gone off and contacted their users within Apache to help them to upgrade, to move off Log4j 1 to the more current version that works on 9, of course. Um, similarly, other projects um, that we are in touch with in the, say, Maven ecosystem um, have done a lot of good work over the past year to make sure that the functionality we provide in 9 is actually supported by the tools, uh, resolved a number of issues, and made a number of you know, incremental releases um, improving their, their facilities to work with the release itself. Um, and sometimes uh, this is sometimes a bit challenging because what we try to do is we try to sign up the, the projects from our side, approach them directly, that are the most popular ones. Um, and that uh, sometimes also means changing, uh, chasing down, they say, uh, diaspora of Google Code or of um, Codehouse, of these various hosting sites that have over time, you know, diminished, disappeared and finding out you know, who's still running these projects so we can actually get them involved. Because many of these things, like QDocs, are eventually dependencies that a bunch of popular projects we depend on. So we want these dependencies to work with nine and future releases. And of course, we want your code to be part of this too. Next slide. Um, yeah, awesome. Um, and so for us, the question now that nine is um, you know, getting close to the end game, and 10 is opening up, what do we do next? So where do we go with, say, JDK and 10 outreach? What should we be uh, looking at um, doing better and different for the next release? And with that, I'd like to open up for questions because I think we have about seven more minutes. So developers from both Maven and Gradle are involved. Um, uh, there are, of course, for some of them, in, in some cases, challenges. In Gradle's case, um, there are some interesting issues that crop up because the module system does restrict access to um, private classes. So there is, for example, in Gradle, there is one, um, one bit of functionality that's there to uh, be able to set um, environment variables on uh, demons. And to do that, it goes into you know, uh, an unmodifiable collection using set accessible of environment variables and makes it modifiable again, which is maybe not something you should be doing, right? But the thing is, it's really a tricky problem. Setting environment variables um, under, say, JLibc is not as nice and easy as it sounds. Um, there's a wonderful manual patch page in, in JLC in Linux that basically tells you don't do this in multi-threaded programs or bad things will happen. So this is an example where you know, the Gradle team has to look at issues they have with the code and figure out if there is a better way to do this, if there is a different way to implement functionality in, in 9, or if this is something where we would need to think about providing adequate interfaces in some later release if we can't do this you know, at all. Right? If the glibc says you can't do this, then that's a problem. Um, for Maven, Robert from the Maven team has been around here as well, and they've been working on a number of things. Um, I don't think that all of their tests pass yet. I don't know if you know, Uwe. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but uh, for example, the issue I mentioned is already solved. Okay. Right. So we have a number of things to go through to make you know things work as they as we hope they should, but. What we're trying to do here is create a channel between developers of the major projects and the teams working behind you know, the scenes on, say, JDK and uh, direct memory mapping, as Uwe mentioned, so that people who you know, work together can actually work together in OpenJDK.
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why that's why build tools and low-level libraries like that have been, you know, um, our first kind of target to reach out to. Uh, we have since tried to expand this this coverage, uh, you know, to cover other areas of the JVM as well. So we have, as you've seen before, a lot of good input from, say, Uwe and these teams about hotspot issues. We have really good input about core libraries issues, areas where we would like to see more projects come here, say, things like JavaFX, where we only have a few projects participating so far. Um, or serviceability and, and parts like that. Um, so, you know, if you don't, if you do this, though, if you develop a project that uh, works in these parts, we would really welcome you over here, right, to, to participate in this and let us know about issues that break. Um, if you do work on build systems that are not Maven, Gradle, and something else, you're very welcome as well, right? Yeah, there have been a number of recent changes, and as, as Uwe mentioned, Build 148, that have led to a bit of, you know, struggle for a number of tools. But I think this will gradually get worked out. It would be very useful as well if you could go to the Quality Outreach page and look at the list. See, is there any projects on there that are really missing that you think should be on there? We'd love to. And if, there, if you have contacts, we're more than happy to go talk to them. I don't think we do. Well, I think we filled out the survey, yeah, but I don't yeah, think you're listed. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. come to me and yeah. we'll pick it up. Yep. Uh, have you talked to um, Apache Felix or OSGI framework people uh, for JDK9 builds? Um, I'm pretty sure we've talked to Apache Felix. I'm not entirely, I can't remember off the top of my head whether we got a positive uh, response or not. So um, we have a kind of 50% hit rate, we think, uh, when we go out to people and ask them do they want to join us. Um, it's like if we go out to 100, 50 of them will come back and say, yes, okay. So sometimes it's because we don't know the actual, you know, the, the real person who should be con we should be contacting to. So that's why it would be really great if you guys could have a look and see, are we missing projects? And if you know of context, that would really help us. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. <laughs> Five bucks. Bugs. Yeah. Um, so. Tell where we have one person signed up. Oh, you do it. Wow. Awesome. Who is it? <laughs> Cohen. 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 Aiden. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>